Why is it that sometimes your internet is slow? Even when it should be fast because you're paying for the good stuff, you've got fast internet. But often, when you're visiting certain websites or when you're video chatting or gaming online, it's dragging. Why is it doing that? One word. It's a scary word. I hate to even say it. Latency. Whew, what is that? I'll tell you in a second, but just know that we're working on it. Here's what we're doing. We're combining the powers of 5G and the cloud, which might sound kind of weird, but it's legit. Verizon has the 5G, AWS has the cloud, the most comprehensive cloud platform out there. They're joining forces to defeat latency, our biggest problem with the internet right now. Oh, and by the way, huge thanks to Verizon for sponsoring this video. So what is this latency thing? Why is it so scary? Latency is how long it takes you to access a website on the internet or anything really. All the websites and stuff you access on the internet, they live somewhere. They have a physical location, typically in a data center. And if the website you're trying to reach lives in a data center that's physically close to you, it takes you less time to get there. Your latency is lower. But if that website lives in a data center really far away from you, your latency is higher. It takes you longer to get there. And that's the scary thing. We try to avoid that. But distance is not the only thing affecting latency. You see, traveling across the internet, going to your favorite website is often like taking a road trip. I actually just took a road trip to the Grand Canyon with my family. Google Maps said it would take us 16 hours to get there. Do you think it took us 16 hours? No, I have four kids. Endless pit stops, bathroom breaks, snacks, meals. 16 hours turned into 25 hours real quick. Not kidding. And the internet works in a similar way. So when you try to access your favorite social media website, here's what happens. You hop on the internet highway. Google Maps said it would take 300 milliseconds to get there. Not the case because as your traffic goes through the internet, it's making pit stops at routers and switches and routers and switches and firewalls all throughout the internet. Each device, each network, adding just a little bit of time to your trip. You know those bathroom breaks add up. And then like any proper road trip, you might hit rush hour traffic, slowing you down a bit. There might be a road closed and you have to take a detour and go down this country road. There might be sheep in the road and you have to stop. Like all kinds of crazy things can happen. The internet is no different. All these things are happening all the time, adding to your latency, adding to the time it takes for you to get to your favorite website. So how will 5G and the cloud help us with latency? If you look at 5G, it's already killing it. Like if you look at Verizon's 5G ultra wideband, which takes advantage of the millimeter wave spectrum, they're helping a lot with latency. Like, here's what they're doing. They're going to make your trip a bit shorter. So they remove some of the roads, some of the pit stops, and they bring their stuff closer to you. They even took it a step further. They took the network equipment, all the pit stops in their network, and virtualized it. They're taking out part of your trip and making it shorter, lowering your latency. So now it looks more like this. The latency in Verizon's network is super low. And 5G is also fast, 10 times faster than 4G LTE. So let's trade in our RV for a rocket. But we still eventually have to leave Verizon's network, hop on the internet, and go through all this crazy mess. Which it can be a mess. It isn't always, but it can be. And no matter how fast your internet is, even if you're riding a rocket, your latency can still be high, depending on how far away that website or service is. And of course, the path to that service can be riddled with issues. So how do we solve this issue, the issue of the big, bad, wild internet causing this high latency? Well, here's where the cloud solution comes in, and it's amazing. AWS took their cloud their servers, the servers that are hosting the websites you're trying to reach. They took it and they put it right here, right inside Verizon's network. Do you see what's happening here? Where we're going, we don't need roads. They took out the trip. <laughs> they took out the internet. Well, they didn't take it out. They just removed the need to go across it. So when you want to visit your favorite social media website or when you want to game online or visit your favorite coffee store and they're running applications that need super low latency, boom, they're right there. Super crazy low latency because they took out the distance and all the variables that you might encounter on the big bad wild internet. What Verizon and AWS are doing is called MEC or mobile edge computing. And I want you to focus on the edge computing part. Edge computing is all about taking the resources that you need to reach, websites, the servers that host them, gaming servers, all that stuff, and bringing it to the edge. The edge is where you are, as close to you as possible. So we don't even have to think about latency. It becomes a non-issue, which is kind of cool. No, it's really cool. Now, AWS is taking their servers, their cloud, and putting it inside network operators' data centers. Network operators like Verizon. And this is genius, because think about it. Network operators like Verizon have a massive network with data centers everywhere. Data centers that are probably very close to you. This is actually a new infrastructure service they're offering. It's called AWS Wavelength. And as of August 6, 2020, it's available. So let's say, for example, I had a coffee store, and I hosted that in AWS. If I wanted my coffee store, to be right there in your backyard, very, very close to you. All I have to do is go into the AWS portal, a few clicks, and boom, I'm there. And if your backyard is in Boston, the Bay Area, and other cities coming soon, it's already happening. 5G Edge and Mech are there. Okay, 
what Verizon and AWS are doing with 5G and mech. It's pretty cool. I mean, we can get to our stuff faster. That's what we care about, right? Speed. But I, I want to stop right there because it does mean more than that. There are things that we could not do on the internet until now. And I want to show you two examples involving basketball and colon cancer, which sounds weird, but it's, it's amazing. Check this out. Hi, my name is Davian Ross, and I'm one of the founders and president of DD Sports, and our basketball product is called Shot Tracker. Shot Tracker is a sensor-based technology that tracks statistics and analytics, providing real-time data to coaches, broadcast partners, fans, and players, all with sub-second latency. Now, this is already cool. I mean, they they got sensors on basketballs and all kinds of stuff to track the game, giving real-time analytics. That's awesome. Basketball is constant activity up and down. Latency is so, so, so critical. One thing that we're doing that's really exciting is demoing our shot tracker technology over Verizon 5G and AWS Wavelength. This allows us to see the delta between the traditional process, which is 4G, and this accelerated amplified process that utilizes both 5G and Mac. Are you seeing that? That's crazy. So <laughs> 4G, you can notice that delay, right? It's like slow, jittery. And when I say 4G, I mean 4G in the cloud. So the cloud could be very far away. Whereas 5G Edge and AWS Wavelength, it's right there, very close. So the latency is lower and we're able to track the movement of the ball much better. Check it out. You can distinctly see the difference in the speed of ball movement. That's crazy. When I think about what 5G and Edge computing can do, I think about coaches. I think about them getting access to this video and data anywhere in the facility. It may be in the locker room at halftime or sitting on the bench during the game, all delivered in real time. When you think about being able to take this data and incorporate it into the broadcast, latency is even more important. We've been waiting on this for so long and the time is now. It's finally here. And it will revolutionize the fan experience the viewing experience and how we consume data and sports for the rest of our lives. That's pretty cool. Like coaches being able to have those metrics, that data in real time. The ball was thrown, they see how fast it went. That's awesome. Now this next example, this next use case, it's amazing because doctors are using 5G, mech, and AI to help prevent and diagnose colon cancer. It's so cool what they're doing. Check this out. The trial we're doing with Verizon and AWS is about using AI to help endoscopists more accurately detect polyps in real time. It's crazy. I'm Dr. Shannon Scholl. I'm a gastroenterologist in Raleigh, North Carolina. One of the problems that gastroenterologists like myself face is finding these very subtle polyps. Purpose of this trial is to use 5G, AI, and the edge to put another set of eyes on that. Colonoscopy moves very, very fast, and I really need a computer program to keep up with me. I can't wait two to three seconds. So the really vital thing about this technology is the speed. It works by taking the video feed from the scope, sending it through the 5G network to the wavelength node, where the AI model is trained for identifying different types of polyps. That's too and cool. the results are then sent back in real time to the monitor of the practitioner. So what you're seeing here is the actual high def <laughs> monitor that. that I'm looking at during a colonoscopy procedure. And the neat thing about this program is that it's drawing bounding boxes around this polyp in real time. And they really draw my attention to this sort of pale flat polyp that's trying to blend into the background. Are you seeing that? Like, so <laughs> AI is helping them identify this polyp right here, which is a little gross, but it's so cool to see. And what she's saying is that she would normally have a hard time identifying polyps like that, more subtle polyps, because they're going through those colons fast. And with this AI technology, they have like an extra set of eyes. It's almost like a bunch of doctors helping them do this procedure. The system, if it is not fast enough, will actually miss drawing boxes around the polyps in real time. And that's why you need Verizon's 5G and AWS wavelength to give you that low latency. The thing that really excites me about this technology is that I think it's gonna be really important in the prevention of colon cancer. It improves accuracy in patient outcomes. It's going to be the standard of care and it's gonna be accessible to everyone. And that's good medicine. So things like this, using AI to detect polyps to help you find out if someone has colon cancer, that's huge. So this software, this application would almost be useless unless they had that real time, that low latency, because they're moving quick. And if that application doesn't go, oh, there's one right there and let the doctor know, it's already missed. So those are just two examples of how 
Solving the biggest problem we have with our internet, high latency, will change what we do day to day. So as Verizon expands their network, which they will, as AWS has more wavelength zones, which they will, we're gonna see some crazy things start to happen. Driverless cars, autonomous cars will become more advanced. Maybe we'll finally get to game online in VR because we can't right now. Latency is one of the biggest reasons we can't. So what do you think about this? 5G and mech. I mean, 5G gives us faster speeds, right? And we can connect more devices to a network. And then mech, mobile edge computing, we're moving AWS, the cloud, closer to people, removing that high latency. What do you think we're gonna do with it? <laughs> I don't know. Obviously our things are gonna be faster, but I think we can do a lot more. So I'm curious about your ideas. Let me know below. Well guys, that's about it. If you like this video, hit that like button. You gotta help the algorithm. If you haven't subscribed, well, subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. Yep, that's all I had. I'll catch you guys next time.